great. Well, good evening. We are so glad to have you for our second family forum. Our topic this evening is our English as a Second Language program for the district K-12. And we're extremely excited to have you all with us today. Um, we're going to go ahead. Oh, I see a few more people coming, so I'm going to admit them. We're going to start with some introductions. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and mute people as they come in, just so that we can all hear everyone. Hi, Benna. It's nice to have you. <laughs> My name is Jana Alleg, and I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning. Um, I work with um, Ms. Sue Martin, who oversees our federal programs. I'm going to let her introduce herself. My name is Susan Martin. I uh, work with Dr. Alleg and our ESL teaching team. And uh, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Thank you. We do have one of our um, English as a Second Language teachers on with us right now. Deb, would you like to um, introduce yourself? Oh, thank you. I, I am very grateful. This is Ashok. Actually, I'm not a Bina. I'm her husband. Well, thank you. We're glad to have you, Benya. Thank you. I'm Debbie Morenzel, and I teach ESL at Middle School South, so I see all the middle school students. We're all great right. to hear. Esther, would you like to introduce yourself? That's okay if you don't want to. You certainly don't have to. Um, I am going to go ahead and mute all of our participants at this point, and then we will have you unmute if you have questions. Um, you may also use the chat, and we will get to your questions as well. Um, Dr. Also, Alec, uh, uh, Mrs. Richardson is with us now. She may want to introduce herself as well. Thank you very much. Mrs. Richardson, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, I apologize for being late. We have parent-teacher conferences tonight, but I'm Mrs. Richardson. I'm the ESL teacher at Sedalia Elementary, and I've been here for, I don't know, 15 or 16 years, I think. Excellent. Thank you. And and Kim is, Miss Richardson is also helping us present this evening, so we're excited to have her. Um, would anyone else like to introduce themselves? I saw a few people come in. Okay, that's absolutely fine. Please feel free. This is a very informal presentation. So if you have any questions, please feel free to stop us or put a question in the chat and we'll be glad to answer it. Um, so the purpose of our program this evening um, is to provide information about our English as a Second Language program, the services that we provide, ways that we try to engage all of our families, and really um, an overview of our Title III funds that we get from the federal government that supports our English as a Second Language program. We also want this to be a very lively um, conversation, and so we wanted to serve as an engagement opportunity where we can get to know you and you can get to know us a little bit and we can gain insight into how, um, how everyone's feeling or different opinions uh, and different ideas that we might have. Um, let's just get started with a brief overview of what is our ESL programming. Mrs. Martin, would you like to do this? Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, ESL program, programming, English as a Second uh, Language program, it's designed to improve uh, the education of our English learners. Uh, those are students uh, who uh, English is their second language. And we, uh, the program is designed to help them learn English language and meet the challenging state standards um, that the Ohio Department of Edu uh, from the Ohio Department of Education and also to be successful on the achievement test that the Ohio Department of Education uh, requires. Focuses of the program include the following areas, uh, listening, reading, speaking, and writing. And uh, we have a staff of uh, six ESL teachers in our district and uh, they're a cohesive, collaborative, wonderful team. And um, 
they provide uh, the uh, services for our students. Uh, one important thing to note, or interesting thing I think, is that the EL population in Ohio has doubled in the last 10 years in our school systems, and we currently have approximately 60,000 uh, EL English learning students. Uh, the primary language in Ohio, uh, by 40% 40, 40 of those families, uh, speak Spanish with 90 other languages spoken across the state. Um, in Groveport, we have over 300 uh, English uh, learners, and uh, Spanish is also the primary language of our students as well. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Susan. I just saw that we have another participant. Um, so before we get into how we identify our students, uh, Mr. Pease, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Sorry, I was running a couple minutes late, but uh, my name is Ken Pease. I am uh, an elementary principal. I work at Sedalia Elementary School. Uh, this is my third year as principal here, my 15th year um, serving in that capacity. I was an elementary teacher before that. And I think in all 25 years of my education, I have worked with English language learning students in my room and in my buildings. And uh, as a matter of fact, my first three years, I was uh, taught in Houston, Texas, and I got the job and they said, um, Every, well, I didn't know this, but then the first day of work, I realized every student spoke Spanish and only half of them spoke Spanish and English. And so it was an awesome experience to be completely immersed and just fell in love with English language learners from then. And I've had the opportunity to work since then uh, with all those kiddos. So thank you for having me. And that's, that's my story. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Pease. And Mr. Pease will also be sharing a little bit more um, further along in the presentation. Um, oh, just got, uh, let me admit one more of our participants. Hello, welcome. We're glad to have you. Um, we're just getting started. We've just done a brief overview of what is English as Second Language Program. And I'm just going to go into just a very brief overview of how we screen all of our new enrollment students and our students for English language services. So the very first thing that we do is during the enrollment process, we ask our families to fill out this language usage survey. I have it up on the screen for you. It's just a snapshot of it. But we want to know more about our students and what languages they speak at home, what languages might be spoken by their families, if our students are bilingual, and so forth. This gives us that very first measure to say, do we need to look further to see if we need to support Daddy? students as an English learner. So after we give the language usage survey, if it comes up that um, students are speaking a different language in, in their home um, or English is not their predominant language, we do then go towards a screener, which is called, let me see if I can get the screen to go, which is called the Ohio English Language Proficiency Screener, or you might also hear the acronym OOUT. And it is a state-provided standard uh, tool that we use uh, with our students. It is We screen our students in speaking, listening, reading, and writing. And um, by law, we should screen our students within 30 days of their enrollment. Once our students are screened, if they, if they show signs that they do need some additional support in learning the English language and speaking, listening, reading, or writing, then our fabulous team of like Deb and Kim uh, jump in and uh, they start serving our students to provide those services. Kim, would you like to talk a little bit about the services we do provide? Yeah, uh, so we really have two ways that we work with students. And in, in some cases, we pull out small groups of students and work with them on speaking, conversation, um, through games, through just conversation with each other or with us talking about different topics. Um, also, we work on reading and writing and some of the skills that they just need to learn for their regular classes. And then in other cases, we will do inclusion ESL, which means that we go to students' classes, usually their reading class, their um, language arts class, 
and help them within their class, with their classwork, and um, just have the ability to let them stay in their class with their English speaking peers. So a lot of kids have both of those, just depending on the levels that they're at. Kim, and in, in most cases, this is done also through a lot of like discussions with the students. It's not just like a paper to pencil thing all the time, is it? No, not at all. It's a lot of it is especially for newer students who are newer to the country or just newer to learning English. A lot of it is conversation and it'll be a long time before we even really focus on writing um, just because we feel that we need to help them be able to communicate before they can master the other skills. What are some of those very, like if students are learning English for the very first time, what are some of those vocabulary like genres that you work on? Do you mostly work on nouns or verbs or what do you work on? Uh, I would say that generally we would start with nouns, just everyday basic vocabulary to help them just kind of succeed, you know, food. Yeah. Like this is book, door. Yeah. So that they can, you know, are able to get their point across with things that they need. And then, you know, that carries over into basic sentences that help them, you know, um, speaking about things they can do or things that they like, things that they have just to get the verbs in there. So it's, it's kind of a linear process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deb, would you, I know what, I, know, I don't want to put you on the spot, Deb, but if there's anything you ever like to share, please jump right in. I do basically the same thing with newcomers. I have a beginner group for the um, any of the students that qualify with the screener or with their OALPA scores. And then with the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, I do inclusion with their ELA teacher. And I usually work with nouns and, and verbs. And um, then also I work with a lot of the academic words that especially those that they're going to encounter in some of their other classes. Yeah, that's great. Um, some of the other things that I know that we do um, is, I think we do, it, we work with the kids also on um, how do you translate, like there's like accessibility features on their computers and so forth, and we teach them how to, to go and use Google Translate, for instance, is that correct? Yeah, I thought so. So we, we also try to provide them some additional support. So just not when you're there, they have some other strategies that they can go to. So that's wonderful. Thank you. So once our um, students have had some services, every year we are required to provide the Ohio English Language Proficiency Ass Assessment or the OALPA. This is usually done um, in February. And we um, provide this assessment, and it's usually given one-on-one um, -on -one for the most part. Isn't that correct, ladies? That's, that's what I thought, especially at the younger grades. And um, we really are, again, they, they do the exact same thing. They uh, assess the students in reading and listening and writing and speaking. And students then are um, given scores that would show if they um, have – a proficient understanding of the English language in those categories. Once a student is able to get um, level four and five in all categories, then they are exited out of services. Um, and that usually takes, I think we figured it out, um, I think it usually takes about three to four years for a student um, if they're coming to us at a very basic level of English language. Um, understanding and being able to listen and speak and read and write in the English language to really become more proficient to, to exit out of services. Um, I will tell you, you will get, um, as a family member of um, the family does get an OALPA score report, and it will show if the student is in the overall of that emerging, progressing, or proficient stage. There is also on this website right here, and we will also post it on our Go Cruiser website, but you can take practice tests uh, with your child if you'd like. Um, and you'll see right here it says view the practice test and you can go in and students um, can take the practice test so they don't feel in nervous or if you just want to know exactly what it looks like, feel free to go ahead and take it. You don't have to have a special code or anything like that. Communication. Sue, would you like to speak a little bit about communication? 
Sure. Um, communication uh, is a two-way. Two -way. We want to make sure that we communicate to families um, all the information, everything that's going on in our building, um, how the student's doing academically, uh, anything a parent would want to know or anything that's going on in our building, we, we certainly want to uh, keep them informed, uh, opportunities to be involved. Uh, at the same time, we want uh, to hear from parents as parents and families as well. And so uh, we want you to reach out to us and tell us uh, how you would like to become involved when you have questions or concerns about your child's education. Uh, some, there are a lot of ways to do that. Uh, our district website is loaded with information. There's a calendar there with uh, district events and, any, and school events. Uh, there is also um, school uh, events listed when you uh, check your school web page out. Um, we have district newsletters. We send out emails and, we, and uh, text messages. We're on social media, and you can find those links on the web page as well, or on Facebook and tw Twitter. Uh, Ms. Richardson's just, Mrs. Richardson just uh, mentioned parent-teacher conferences, and they're going on uh, this week and next week uh, in the buildings next few weeks. So it's a great opportunity to uh, talk directly with your teachers about how your child's doing in school. Um, call or email your building principal or teacher at any time. Um, they, they will get back to you at their earliest convenience as soon as they can, but they do want to hear from you and they do want to share with you. So um, I know we send out, uh, some teachers send out uh, weekly newsletters. Uh, and you can also have information, if you need information translated or, or you would like uh, an interpreter at a meeting, we'd be glad to provide that for any families too. So if you let your principal or teacher know that you need something translated or you'd like an interpreter at an event or a, uh, or a meeting, uh, we will arrange that for you. So let your teacher and principal know. If yeah. I've missed a way, Mr. Pease, that you all communicate that I didn't say, I'm in there. Mr. Pease, I actually think this is um, a picture from your um, multicultural event that you had, not last year, but the year before. I think last year we kind of got snowballed with the pandemic. But um, Mr. Pease is going to share with us a lot of fun things that we do to bring in different cultures and to learn about different cultures in our schools. Thank you. Uh, one of the other things, Susan, that we do a lot of uh, on the communication mm -hmm. question is we have Dojo and Remind, which are apps on the phone that the teachers use. It's been really a great way for teachers to communicate with families on a daily basis, sometimes on an hourly basis. And so if, you're if your teachers have Dojo or they have Remind and you don't know about those apps yet, you want to get that because that is great information as parents about what's going on in class. So I really, I'm glad our teachers have that. So this is a picture from our literacy night. We had it two years ago and it was a huge success. We figured we had 1200 people come onto the campus that evening. Ms. Richardson, who's here with us tonight was instrumental in that along with Dee Dee Stein, who's a reading teacher in our building. And they kind of asked me, is there a way that we could um, celebrate the diversity in our school? Is there a way that we could educate families um, both that are new to our community and ones that have been here for a long time and, and have a reciprocal educational fun night. And so we came up with uh, the literacy uh, math and our literacy and reading night uh, was for the community. We hosted it outside. It was a beautiful evening. We had live music outside. We had uh, literacy events where we had authors come and read. We also had guest readers such as our superintendent came that night. Uh, there were food trucks. There was ice cream available. We had concerts, which our kids were performing in. We also had all of our staff here to meet informally with parents and welcome them to campus. Uh, we had books for all of the children to take with them, as well as some art projects and things that tied to literature. So it was just an awesome experience. We had a lot of really good feedback. People said they definitely wanted to do it again. And so... Ms. Richardson and Ms. Stein and I, we put the committee together and we are ready to go bigger and better than the year before. And then uh, COVID went even bigger and better than us. <laughs> so, <laughs> it got canceled. Um, we had it scheduled for May 16th. I remember the day because we were ready to go. It was really, for an inaugural event, it was super. And it's just a way that all of our schools find ways to celebrate the diversity in our schools and to make sure that we're evenly represented 
across our community. And so we are going to do it again once uh, things resume to some normal activities. It's definitely an event that we're going to do at Sedalia because it highlights our children and it highlights all the great things about Sedalia and about Groveport Madison schools. And um, I'm looking forward to doing it, uh, not only because it'll be normal, but because it was just a terrific event and one that I'm really glad we put together. That's great. Um, and what are some ways that you would like um, other, uh, how do you garner like, um, parent and family uh, feedback at your school? Well, I think it starts on our end in the fact that we have to be really good communicators. We do have to send out those newsletters. We do have to send them out in different languages. We do have to open up opportunities so our families know. And um, for example, we use a lot of translation services. And so if you want to have a parent teacher conference and language is a barrier to setting up that conference or to actually having that conference, we have personnel that can help us translate uh, any kind of languages that we come across. Uh, we also translate a lot of our correspondence going home through print. And uh, we open up those doors at certain, before school started, we had open house, but we specifically had some time for our English learning families to come in um, and, and get some, some additional time with our staff to know exactly uh, what they needed to do to plug into the school. And so um, we, we did those opportunities. The other thing, and Ms. Richardson's done a good job of this, is she has sought out volunteers throughout the community. So whether they're faith-based organizations or we had, um, we had a dental program that supported the neighborhood come in and educate the kids. We've had all kinds of programs like that. And so we wanna, um, we have to be mindful that uh, if people aren't coming to our building, it's not because they don't want to come. It's not because they can't come. It's sometimes they just don't understand what we're offering. And so we've really made an effort on our end to make sure that our families and our community know that this is a place to come. This is a place that's welcome and opening. And we, and we want you to participate. Uh, parent teacher conferences, we want you to come and join the PTO. We want you to volunteer at our events like picture day and book fairs uh, and field day and things like that. And um, we want you to be on our leadership teams, our PBIS teams. We want you to be on our principal councils. I know there's a couple principals that have pizza with the principal. And those are events when parents can come, sit with us, contribute, and also listen and ask questions. And so um, I think- the I don't think I ever did, got invited to pizza with a principal. You know who did it? I think it was Mr. Jones used to do it next door at Middle School North. And I always was a little envious. I'm like, I think that's something we need to do. Cause who- I did like, too. That sounds yeah, Who doesn't want pizza? So um, I love it. yep, it's about getting plugged in and feeling welcome enough to do that. Great. Um, I'd like to pause here just to ask if anyone has any questions about our ESL program and um, different services we offer or different ways or opportunities for, for our families to connect. Okay. Um, then we would like to just also share a little bit about our Title III funds, which is uh, the funds that we get from the federal government to support our English uh, learner program. Um, in, in those are Title III is a federally funded program, Dr. Alec, you're right about that. And uh, the federal funds come through the Ohio Department of Education to the school district. Uh, Groveport Madison um, schools uh, receive Title III funds. Uh, the purpose of Title III funds, um, actually the name of the grant is Language Instruction for English Learners. And the purpose of the grant is um, to provide supplemental support to help students uh, become proficient with the English language and to achieve, um, at a, to achieve independently and at high levels in the classroom. Um, Title III money uh, is we're required to spend it in three uh, areas, uh, in three different areas. Um, one area that we must spend my, the Title III funding is to increase the English language proficiency through effective programs and services. And so what that essentially means is that we have to devote some of the funds uh, to, the, to the instruction, the teaching and learning. Uh, the second category that we have to spend Title III funds uh, is to provide professional development. Professional development is training uh, for our staff uh, to better support, to best support our English learners. It's, uh, it's our ESL teachers, it's our general education teachers, our administrators, 
anyone who would work with our ESL students. We want to provide professional development so we can give them the support they need. And the third uh, category where we are required to spend our title uh, funds are to promote family and community engagement. And so when we have the literacy nights that uh, the international nights that Mr. Pease talked about, some of the funding goes to help support those activities. Um, uh, anything to, out, to, to, to outreach to the community is where we want to spend that fund, those funds. Uh, sometimes we might uh, tra uh, translate um, documents that we typically wouldn't just in case someone really needs, needs that information. Um, again, it's supplemental. It's not what we would do generally, but it's in addition to what we would typically do uh, is where we spend these dollars. And we're always open to suggestions. So if yes, um, you and some of the your neighbors have ways that you could be spending our money um, in a different way or that would be a better outreach to our families, we're definitely open to hearing that. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to the next slide, which is we would really like your feedback um, and we would really like to thank you for coming today. Um, in the chat, I have put a link to a survey that we would like for you to take. Uh, it takes about three minutes, three or four minutes for you to complete. Um, and we'd really like to, to know what you're thinking and um, get some of your ideas down. So if you wouldn't mind just taking a few minutes and clicking on that link and um, filling out that survey, we would greatly appreciate it. We would also like to just take a few moments to answer any questions anyone has, or if you would like uh, to start a dialogue about uh, anything that has to do with our English second language program, we would like to talk about that also. Or if we've forgotten anything, anyone. All right, well, um, I think it's Bene and Esther and Abby Aswa. Thank you so much for coming, Deb and Kim and Ken. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your time this evening. Susan, joy as usual. Thank you for uh, co-presenting with me today also. I, I really appreciate that. Everyone, we uh, want you to get out and enjoy this gorgeous weather. <laughs> so we're not going to keep you. Um, if there are no questions, I will stay on. So if you would like to ask a few questions, um, just so you and I, or just a few of us, I'll be here for you. Please fill out that um, feedback form. We would greatly appreciate it. And we hope you have a great evening. Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank very you all. Much. Good night. This, this is, they, is it say, say, see, say, do you have any questions for us? Um, I was, um, I think I had you say, um, there's an app for English learner or somewhere you can take a test. I didn't get that point, Claire. Yes, let me grab that link and I will put it in the chat for you. It's where they take the practice test of the Ohio English language proficiency okay. test. Let me get that for you right now. Sure, I got the right. Yep, here it is. Okay, I have put that in the chat. It is okay. oh.oelpa, uh, but you can click on that. 
And then when you click on that, um, it'll take you to a screen. Let me share my screen with you real quick and, and show you what it looks like. Okay. Susan, can you give me a thumbs up when you see it okay? All right. Um, so you would click right here where it says students and family. And then right here is where you can enter that student practice site where okay. you go in and your student or you could even take the test so that you could see what it's like. All right. All right. And just sign in as a Google user. Or I guess, All right. I'm sorry. All right. Do you have any other questions for us? That will be all for tonight. All right. Well, thank you for coming today. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. You have a great evening. Okay. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.